Welcome to Uncle Bird's Barbecue, and I'm your favorite uncle, Uncle Bird. And in today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to do the smoked chicken quarter. That's right, smoked chicken quarters. And I'm gonna show you how to cook them so that they ain't nasty, like the ones you've been eating. Pin and pad and get ready. I'm gonna show you how to do these lid quarters. Let's go. Oh man, I forgot. Hey, look, I need y'all to subscribe and smash that like button. Smash it. Smash that thing down. Alright, let's go ahead and get started because these chicken quarters ain't gonna clean they self. The supplies we're gonna need today is a six inch boning knife, a 48 blade jacquard, a plastic cutting board, and some paper towels. As you can see, the cutting board is still wiggling around. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna moisten the paper towels and place them underneath each end of the cutting board to give us a secure work area. It'll keep it from wiggling around. Now, you don't wanna go too cheap on your paper towels right here because you're gonna need something that's gonna hold together. So use something decent boom there we go ready to work we're gonna start by placing the 10 pound bag of lead quarters into the opposite sink now in order to keep these a little bit cleaner to work with we're gonna make a cut at the bottom of the bag and the uh, cut is gonna allow the nasty bits and additional extra blood and moisture uh, to drain out the bottom of the bag so as we work through the bag it's not as wet and nasty all right, go ahead and make our cut right here and just sit it back upright. Everything drains away to the sink. Now we're gonna cut this bag open. We're gonna get started with our first lid quarter. Let's get them out the bag here. And uh, go ahead and get a little water going. You wanna use a, a stream of water no bigger than a number two pencil. All right, so this is the, the glob of fat that we wanna cut off, because this is the part right here that make people hate lid quarters. So you wanna make sure you get that cut, get that glob of fat open, off the uh, leg quarter and as you can see it opened up some additional areas where we'll be able to get seasoning onto the drumstick itself you just got to hit it with the jacquard two or three times and the jacquard is going to help tenderize the meat and help make the brine more effective this is the tail you yeah. want to make sure you always cut that off and then also get this great big glob of fat off now the reason why we're doing this is one because that thick glob of fat is disgusting uh, and two uh, by cutting this nasty glob of fat and that tail piece off it makes the, the piece of meat more aerodynamic so that it's not going to catch a lot of heat while it's on the smoker because those little pieces that, that stick out they'll, they'll dry the meat out on you and as you can see a number two pencil sized stream of water you don't want a fire hose blowing salmonella camphor back all over the kitchen all right let's go ahead and get the rest of this this nasty glob of fat off and then you'll see there's a piece of tail we'll cut that off as well and then you hit it with a jacquard and then you drop it in the brine bucket. So using this technique of, of cleaning and prepping the leg quarters, it, it really shouldn't take you more than 10 minutes to prepare a 10 pound bag. And once you get a little bit quicker, uh, you probably knock a 10 pound bag out in about five to seven minutes. All right, so I'm gonna pull that out. That's what I always look for is that tail and then that glob of fat. You just grab it and pull it up. And as you can see, this is just mainly fat. There might be a tiny bit of meat in there, but I mean, Lead quarters are like 69 cents a pound. I mean, it ain't that expensive. So go ahead and hit these with your card and rinse into the nasty bits off and just drop them into the uh, brine bucket. Again, this nasty, disgusting glob of fat, we got to get that off. I love lead quarters. I admit they were a little bit intimidated when I first started cooking them, but once you use this prep technique, ain't nothing better for feeding the crowd. Very cheap. So if you got a lot of people that like to come over and eat, and don't never like to bring any money, the lead quarters are perfect for them. All right, get that off, and then we're gonna speed it up a little bit because I had to clean another 10 pound bag uh, of lead quarters because uh, you know if I fire it up, might as well cook a bunch of them. So we're gonna go ahead and get these cleaned up, and I like this technique because. It really helps with the cleanup. As you can see, all our mess is confined to the sink, and we can even use the paper towels uh, that we moistened earlier to help clean up. Now we got to make the brine for the chicken. Now, the recipe for the brine is going to be in the description, and in this example, I made two gallons of brine because that's going to be enough brine to cover the chicken. 
Now, a lot of times you'll, you'll see instructions for people to uh, put a plate on it or wear it down, but if, if you've got it in the bag, it's really not gonna matter because you're gonna tie the bag up and everything's gonna be, be covered with the brine in, in any case. And you'll wanna keep it in the brine between six to 12 hours. You do not wanna go more than 12 hours on the chicken uh, because if you do that, it's just gonna be way too salty. And if you do that, don't tell nobody you got the recipe from me. All right, and uh, just wanna pull that up on the sides. And the way I, I tie the bags is because I actually lost the tie that the brand bags come with. So I just took a piece of a plastic grocery bag and then I just uh, tied it around. The same way I would use the uh, twist ties, almost the same way I would use the twist ties that come with the brand bag. But you just uh, tie this up and then uh, I've got an outside refrigerator so I just put this in my refrigerator that I've got in the garage. So I've got plenty of room for a five gallon bucket. If you don't have the room, you can actually brine the chicken in one of those five gallon orange coolers. All right, let's get the uh, chicken out of the brine. We wanna make sure that we rinse everything off because if you don't rinse all this salt off the surface, it's gonna make it extremely salty. And uh, during this part, after everything's rinsed off, you wanna arrange the leg quarters in the sink, kinda all going in the same direction because it's gonna help make the seasoning process go a lot faster. All right, so let's get them arranged. All right, now you're gonna start by putting your, your finger right between the, the uh, leg quarter and the thigh and normally use a downward motion on the leg portion uh, so that we can expose that and bring our finger around to expose the thigh, uh, the thigh meat without tearing the meat from the backbone. You wanna keep that on there because you're gonna have some shrinkage when it goes on the grill anyway. But by doing this, it just completely, uh, it'll keep the chicken from completely coming off of the uh, leg quarter. So you want to open up this little pocket. This is also going to give us plenty area to season the meat. This is what I, I do. I always want to make sure you get underneath the skin. You want to start with the raw cane sugar. You can go heavy with the sugar. And it's going to make like a, a paste that's going to help the other seasonings that we use stick to the meat. All right, so you can go in there, just get it in your little pocket, just open it up, drop it in a little pocket, and uh, you'll be able to get this knocked out in no time. Right here we go, sugar, everybody gets a little sugar. And uh, next we're gonna hit it with the soft free seasoning of choice. I'm using Uncle Bird's hand pack seasoning. And uh, after you season underneath the skin, you just wanna make sure that you get into the habit of pulling the skin back over. Go heavy with the seasoning, it doesn't matter since this does not have any additional salt in it. You do not have to worry about over salt on the meat. All right, go heavy with this people like a lot of flavor it's going to create almost like a little paste it's going to create like a paste underneath uh that's that, that's going to get that's going to cover like every little piece as you pull it off a bite into it all right looks like everybody's ready for the grill let's go clean it on up and we ready All right, I uh, lit the smoker uh, using a chimney full of lump charcoal, and today's smoke we're using mainly oak with a little bit of hickory. Let's just get everything on the grill. This is the hottest end of the, on my grill, so uh, with the chicken you want to cook it hot and fast. It doesn't really benefit from like a really slow, drawn-out process because it's not a, as much fat or connective tissue as there is in other meats. Now I use like a pigtail flipper to flip my chicken. Uh, it's, uh, it's like a long steel pole and it has like a microscopic needle at the end. I uh, also make sure that during the cook I spray with uh, distilled white vinegar. Uh, the distilled white vinegar is going to keep it moist so that it continues to absorb smoke throughout the cook. And the acetic acid is also going to act as a tenderizer. So it, it does a double job and I just use plain distilled white vinegar so that it doesn't clog up the spray bottle. All right, get everything flipped. Look at them, beautiful, and they ready to come off. You see how this sugar caramelizes on the on the meat? All right, we want to take these off and put them into a small preheated cooler uh, for 30 to 45 minutes. That's going to give the meat a chance. It's going to give a chance for the meat, uh, for, I said for the meat. It's going to give a chance for the, the heat and the juices to redistribute throughout the meat. All right, proof me the pudding, here we go. You're gonna take the chicken out. Sometimes the skin pulls back so it's not as pretty, but it doesn't ever affect any of the eating qualities. As you can see, we can carve this with a spoon. Uh, and if you can't do this with your chicken, then your chicken's dry. But uh, here we go. And uh, 
That's it. This is like as my granddaddy Clarence would say, this is gonna be about the size of it. <laughs>